Welcome, everyone. I don't want to be an energetic lady. I also want to be young like Dr. Choma, the dentist. <laughs> I'm from the Department of Physiology. I've been a lecturer there for 10 years. So now you know how old I am. They asked me to speak on student support because I'm part of the mentor program, which is a crucial component of student support. So I'm sure as you walked around, you probably didn't see many medical students, but I'm sure you passed some dentists. And have you ever wondered why our students look so happy and content? It's no coincidence. It's because we have a fantastic student support at our faculty. I still say we're one of the best faculties in the university. And you'll see why. There's big controversy as to who is the main campus and what is Linwood campus and what is Hatfield campus. The dentist and medical and the School of Health Sciences has decided to call us the main campus and we call Linwood Hatfield campus. <laughs> so when they ask you in your interview, where would you like to be, remember the correct answer is main campus. Okay. We hardly ever use the word prince of campus. At the Hatfield campus, they have huge and separate student support. So, for example, at the Hatfield campus, they have a 24-hour crisis line for so students who are in need of immediate emotional and social support. So that could be a victim of crime, a rape victim, hijacking, and things like that. We also have qualified psychologists, both clinical and um, counseling psychologists, who assist students with their needs. We also have academic development programs, Students come from all different schooling backgrounds to bridge the gap. We have these academic development programs. Here at the medical school, we start off with our EMM, Examination Moderation Meeting. So it's all the professors that sit and look at students' results at the end of every term or semester. So the student has been getting 65, 70, and all of a sudden in this one test, the students got 40%. That student gets identified and called in to see the chair of the School of Medicine or the chair of School of Dentistry. We want to know what happened and why did your mark drop to 40%. It might be parents are divorcing or there's financial problems or the death in the family. That problem will be identified and the student will be referred for the appropriate help. So it is really scary, but sometimes we find out about students who do not have place to sleep of food to eat. So two years ago, we found out a student was living under a bridge, traveling with five taxis and five trains to get to the campus. So we do have systems in place to pick up a student like that. Tutors, we don't have much money in the university. We don't have much money in the government. But we have <laughs> tutors. I'm not sure if they even get paid. It's ex senior medical students who tutor than the junior students. So I teach the second years. The third year medical students get appointed as tutors for those classes. They come in every lunchtime and discuss problems the students are experiencing. Mentors, the mentor program, which I am a part of, is a new and exciting component. We have third year medical students, our mentors, who get appointed a first-year medical student, a mentee. So currently we have 30 medical students and 12 dentistry third-year students who each have a first-year mentee. It's usually in the ratio 1 to 5 or 1 to 6. We ask medical students to volunteer to be a mentor. I usually promise them five marks for the exam. And I don't always do it, but it's a good incentive to get students to volunteer for the program. It is really heartwarming to see students, despite the hectic academic programs, they still find time to want to help someone. I guess that's why they're in this faculty. We have monthly meetings. They get a form to fill in. We'd like to see what progress they're making. The mentors are not there to solve their problems. It's to guide the students direct them to the appropriate help, and then we are subgroup members who then intervene should there be a problem. Uh, students get two lunches for the year. 
They get one slice pizza when we do orientation. So we do have our little bribing tactics. They get a certificate at the end of the year. But on top of it all, I think our mentors grow just as much as our mentees. And I think it also looks good on a CV, should you want to pursue something further. Impaired Student Committee, selected group of staff members in our faculty who are assigned to identify students who's maybe on a wheelchair or the student who's got a hearing disability. So that student will be identified and the steps will be taken to accommodate that student. A big word, conceptual tutor. Currently, it's Professor Lombard. I do not want to know what will happen one day if Professor Lombard has to retire. I think he's past the age of 65 a long time ago. Conceptual tutor is a non-student appointed by the faculty to help students with cultural, social, and language problems. Professor Lombard, I think, is fluent in 12 languages. He is amazing. He still looks like he's 55, maybe younger. Okay. <laughs> students, students support the students form an important core in our support system. So when you stay at the residence, we won't tell the parents exactly what happens there. We'll talk about the good things. They have their own mentorship and own buddy system going on there. And I think all junior students welcome that. Who is going to teach you more about the university if not your student? Okay. They tell you things lecturers don't tell you. They tell you who the bad lecturers are, who the good ones are, which lectures you can skip and who you don't have to bother to attend. Okay. So, <laughs> our students who do not live at the residence also form part of the buddy system and it usually works very well. They also do their own non-official mentoring at the residence. Pulse is part of our faculty house. It's a website developed by the students, for the students and they run it. So we as faculty members have nothing to do with that. But they are so successful and it's running really well. Okay. So is the computer literacy program. All students in their first years get taught how to use the computer. I know most of you can probably do better PowerPoints than me. But officially, you have to do a computer literacy, get the certificate before you can continue. All our lectures and assignments are put on the computer and it's compulsory for you to be computer efficient. Languages, we also have people doing now Sepedi, for example, or not Sutu in their first year to cope with the different languages. So Sepedi was identified as one of the most common black languages. We are now offering the black students who are fluent in Sepedi, for example, if they do not want to do Afrikaans as a language. So that is all offered in our first year. I'm too old to learn a new language, okay? But I'm still thinking of doing some courses. ARV emergency, antiretroviral emergencies. Unfortunately, needle stick injuries is a common occurrence. Okay, so our medical students, we had, I think, about 10 cases reported last year of needle stick injuries in our students, especially when they start their clinical work. We have a free counseling service available for people who want to be tested for HIV. Students get taught in their second year to carry the starter pack. But typical students, they don't always listen to what we tell them to do. So if you get a needle stick injury at 2 o'clock in the morning, there is no uptick that's going to be open, or there's no one you can call who's going to bring the ARVs for you. You're supposed to have the starter pack on you. Our faculty, our family medicine department are the assigned doctors who show and treat students at the ARV emergency center. So they, for example, will get the student to test his or her blood, help the student to get the respected patient's blood. Should the result be positive, they do counseling. And we have HIV specialist physicians who help students with the medication. So student support, you'll agree with me, a crucial component of our faculty, and I think it's what makes our students so happy. Thank you very much.